Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to test the coolant temperature sensor using a voltmeter and a scan tool with live data. Also how to test the wiring to see if it can transfer the information from the sensor to the computer using just a potentiometer. Let's remove this part of the engine cover to reveal the sensor. And if you look under the air injection pump, you're going to see the coolant temperature sensor connector right there. Now let's go inside the cabin and connect our scan tool. The OBD2 port is located right under here. Now it's a good idea to have the car battery on the charger right now because you might have to keep the car on for a while. Now I've got here the new sensor, the engine is cold, it's on the room temperature, it has 17 degrees Celsius as we saw in the live data. The new sensor has also 17 degrees, so if you test it up, as you can see the new sensor has also 17 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now I'm going to keep an eye on the live data. I will unplug the connector from the coolant temperature sensor and you're going to see the temperature drop to minus 40 degrees because right now the computer thinks that there is a huge resistance so with that information we know that if the computer thinks it's a big resistance here the temperature is going to drop so now let's say that the sensor is broken and it has a higher resistance than it should what will happen? well it will read the temperature a lot lower than it is in reality and that can cause a problem especially if the engine is overheating so this sensor is very important to keep your engine alive basically and also the opposite thing will happen if the sensor has no resistance the computer will think that the engine is overheating and therefore will cut the power and as you can see if i connect the voltmeter to the connector you're gonna see the 5 volts reference which is going through the sensor always so what is going on here the computer has its own voltmeter inside it will send 5 volts and that voltage will pass through the sensor the sensor will change its resistance according to the temperature and that's how the computer knows the temperature of the car it will basically convert the voltage signal to a temperature of course the computer is programmed to recognize a specific sensor so for example if you take other sensors from other car it will show different temperature because it's programmed only for this type of sensors so that's a good sign we've got clean 5 volts without disruptions and if you have an intermittent problem you can just begin at this point and wiggle all the wiring harness and see if this voltage is gonna go to zero or increase so it's very important to check the wiring harness if you've got an intermittent problem also you might want to test this when the engine is hot to see if the voltage signal is going away because of the high temperature of the engine okay so next step with the sensor disconnected i'm going to turn the voltmeter to ohms readings and i'm going to attempt to see the resistance of the sensor right now i'm going to actually remove this air injection pump from here okay so this bracket comes out and the pump will also come out disconnect the air lines from here all right it was stuck in there all right so i've got here an old connector from the coolant temperature sensor all right and that will help me a lot to connect on the sensor it's very important actually to have some of these connectors is exactly the same like the original one so i've got connected here my voltmeter there are 3650 ohms on the old one and we know that the temperature is 17 degrees celsius so i note on the paper this is the resistance and the temperature for the old sensor now let's do the same thing for the new sensor let's see first the resistance all right 3040 ohms and let's see what the computer thinks about the new sensor so we've got 21 degrees celsius now i've got this data and i'm going to reconnect the sensor the old one okay it's still reading 17 degrees okay so we've got a quite simple calculation here 
the difference is 600 ohms so if you divide this 600 by 4 degrees it will equal 150 ohms of resistance per 1 degree celsius so in theory right now if i increase the temperature of the sensor with 1 degree we should see 150 ohms of resistance decrease because the higher the temperature the resistance is decreasing so we should see somewhere around 3000 500 ohms so let's see if that's going to happen with both sensors so i'm going to try to increase the temperature of them with one degree or two degrees now i'm going to do that first on the old sensor because it's inside there i'm going to warm up the environment in there and that will last for a long time enough time for me to get the measurements i gotta be very careful not to melt the connections Let's hope that the sensor will not disconnect again. Okay, we've got 21 actually. All right. 21. Let's see. For 21. We've got 3040. That's perfect actually. That's perfect. 3040. For 21 degrees. All right. So I'm going to connect the sensor back on the original connector and the temperature decreased to 20 degrees, which makes sense because the resistance was already increasing it here. So we've got some very clear and interesting results. On the new sensor, we had 3040 ohms while the sensor was 21 degrees and we got exactly the same results on the old sensor, the one which is on the engine. And considering that the computer is the one deciding the temperature while it reads these sensors, we can conclude that the old sensor is actually good, there is nothing wrong with it, and it will do exactly the same job as the old one will do, at least within this range. Right, so those 150 ohms equal with 1 degree Celsius plus or minus on both sides. It has to apply at any temperature, not only on this room temperature. So if you want to go ahead and do the test while the engine is hot and see if there is any deviation from these numbers. You can see guys, even though on this engine there is a trouble code about the coolant temperature sensor, this doesn't mean that the sensor is bad. So it might be like an intermittent problem. So let's double check the codes. Yes, it's still there. So if you guys are going to do this test on your car, you can still use this value 150 ohms per 1 degree Celsius plus minus on both sides. Now, finally, let's do the last test. I've got here a potentiometer which has the maximum of 1000 ohms. I've got the connectors on the right position and I'm going to double check it with the voltmeter. Let's see if this potentiometer works. As you can see, I can increase the resistance up to 1000 ohms and decrease it down to zero. All right, so I'm going to start from 1000 ohms all the way up like that. And you're going to need these needle connectors. I'm going to go again to live data. Let's unplug the sensor. It goes to minus 40 degrees and connect our potentiometer and once the potentiometer is connected we've got 48 degrees celsius that's going to be for 1000 ohms so for example if from this point you can go ahead and see if you keep the sensor on 48 degrees celsius what's going to be the resistance of it I've got here the new sensor connected and I'm going to warm it up until it gets to 48 degrees Celsius. 57 and 58. Okay. I'm going to prepare my voltmeter. 50, 49. I'm going to see it now. Okay, so we've got exactly, exactly the same resistance as this potentiometer had while the sensor was reading 48 degrees so it's perfect i'm going to use these needle connectors and plug them inside the connector 
okay and by the way this test is 100 safe because once you put full continuity through those two wires you've got two pins here it's not going to burn the computer because the computer it expects also that the resistance is going to be almost zero in the case that the engine is overheating so all right so let's see what's going to happen okay so now it has full resistance and it will show minus 40 degrees now let's reconnect it to 1000 ohms and it should show 48 degrees and let's begin to go a little bit up we decrease the resistance and the temperature should rise okay now it reached the maximum temperature and full continuity now i decrease it a little bit so with this test guys you can conclude that the computer of the car reacts properly while the resistance is changing and it's very important to do that offline without the sensor because you want to see if the computer reacts quick and you can see in this situation it does it can easily go up and down at any time okay guys so from this point if you want to replace the sensor it's very easy you've got this sear clip as you can see on the new one you remove that sear clip and begin to wiggle the sensor in there and take it out remember to drain some coolant out of the system you can do that by twisting a little knob on the bottom of the radiator it's red color you can easily see it so yeah that's how you can test the sensor on this v6 mercedes thanks for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up and let me know if you have any questions also until next time drive safe so i can see you in the next video